I'm Urvashi Pitre. My blog is twosleevers.com, and I am the author of this uh, latest Instant Pot Fast and Easy Cookbook. Some of you may know me as the Butter Chicken Lady. Some of you may have bought my uh, Indian Instant Pot or my Keto Instant Pot. But this is actually, whoa, let me just spill my tea while we wait. This is um, the latest book um, in the series and it's called Instant Pot Fast and Easy. It really is fast and easy. I, uh, I'm a very lazy cook. I love good food and I have no time to make it, um, you know, uh, in, in any kind of elaborate way. And I'm going to show you a very simple recipe. So, the interesting thing about this recipe, which is on page 40 of this book, is I almost wondered if I should show it to you because it's so simple, there's nothing to show. And then I realized that all of my 100 recipes are like that. There's really nothing to show. Once you get the ingredient list down um, and you know what spices to use and you know how to turn your Instant Pot on and off, you're pretty much ready to go. I have my Instant Pot on um, saute and I am going to let it get hot. Uh, so this is, an, uh, this is an ultra. I also have back here, if you can see it, a mini. Uh, and I cooked this recipe for you earlier in a mini. Most of my recipes fit in a mini. For those of you who are wondering, I have a little chart as to how much will fit in a mini. So what we're gonna do is, we're gonna let the pot warm up. I'm gonna put a little bit of butter in it. And then I'm going to put some garlic because you can never have enough garlic. So my recipe calls for six cloves. You just put in as much garlic or as little garlic as you want. It's just gonna taste fantastic. And let's get the butter in. All right, so I'm gonna let the butter melt and then I'm putting in some garlic. Now, some of you may have watched a video I've done about the Maillard reaction. And I talk a lot about how pressure cooking can be really easy because you don't actually have to brown your meat. You don't have to brown a lot of ingredients. Can you guys hear that loud lapping sound in the back? My dog has decided this is the perfect time to drink water. So, you know, what are you gonna do? There she is. All right, so we've got butter, we've got garlic. And um, next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put in some sliced onions. So now, um, some of you may know, I have rheumatoid arthritis, um, so some days I'm flared and I can't really cut and slice onions. So in this, in this situation, I have used frozen onions. I use the pre-cut ones from the grocery store. Um, I'm just going to put it in. See now, I'm not browning the onions, I'm just throwing them in there for them to get some butter on them. Guys, we're going to be done with this recipe so fast, it's going to be a little bit embarrassing because I'm like two-thirds of the way through the recipe right now. Um, I have sliced mushrooms. Again, you can use whatever kind you want. The whole point here is we're gonna try to make a cream of mushroom soup with, guess what, mushrooms and cream. We're not gonna use a can, we're not gonna use any of that. We're gonna try to make this as easy as possible. So we have your butter, garlic, onions, and uh, mushrooms. Okay, then I'm gonna put in some chicken. Now, I have here a pound of um, chicken thighs. Now, some of you are gonna ask me, can you do it with chicken breast? And my answer is absolutely. Here's the one thing I want you to note. If you're taking a recipe that's written for chicken breasts, uh, for chicken thighs, and you want to use chicken breasts, my advice to you is cut your meat into bite-sized pieces. It cooks faster and it cooks more evenly. So dumping in like a huge big breast in there is not a good idea because what's going to happen is um, you'll have to adjust the timing, etc. But if you cut it up small, they typically cook in the same length of time. So Gracie's very disappointed that she didn't get any chicken. She usually gets a little bit. But with you guys watching, I thought I'd try to be good. So she didn't get it. And now I know you're thinking, really, this is all she's got. A little bit is about the spicing and about what I'm going to put in at the end. So um, for, if you haven't followed me on Two Sleepers or in my Facebook group, you'll know that I'm known for my use of spices. I use a lot of um, spices in cooking. In this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little salt and a little pepper. If you weren't watching, I would put a lot more pepper. I love pepper. And then um, a little bit of dry thyme. So now if you don't have this and you would prefer to use poultry seasoning or you want to use sage or whatever, do it. I love the thyme in here. Honestly, it reminds me of Thanksgiving a little bit, like your whole kitchen. Actually, the onions smell amazing, uh, but your whole chicken is, uh, your whole kitchen smells good with these um, herbs in there. If, this, if you have browning at the bottom, no matter what the recipe says, put in enough stuff to deglaze it, okay? You don't want to take a chance and let anything burn. Okay, I am now putting in four cups of baby spinach. And I'm just gonna shove them in here. If you're doing this in the mini and you want a little bit more room and you wanna use frozen spinach, have at it. Now here's gonna be the part that people are gonna go, oh no, she didn't. Uh, but I'm actually only gonna put in two tablespoons of water. That's it, two tablespoons of water. And I know the question that's gonna come up, so let me close this real quick. 
and then I will answer the questions. Okay, so the Ultra, by the way, seals itself. So when you close the, when you close the lid, uh, you don't have to turn it to venting and steaming, it'll just kind of do it on its own. If you double the recipe, do you have to double the time? So the answer is no. Here's what's gonna happen. Time for, the, if a pot is really, really full, it's gonna take longer for the pot to come to pressure. But once it's at pressure, it's at 260 degrees Fahrenheit, the food is gonna cook in the same amount of time. So you, if you, if you were um, asked to cook it for six or eight minutes, it's gonna cook in six or eight minutes in any case. Which reminds me, let me set this. So I'm gonna set this to pressure cook, and I'm gonna put it on high for eight minutes, and we're gonna let it cook, okay? Think about the doubling time and doubling um, ingredients in this way. Let's say you were to make one cup of tea. Um, you put a tea bag in into one cup of water and you let it steep for five minutes, okay? Let's say you're making five cups of tea. You have to heat five cups of water, which takes a lot longer. But once you put the tea bags in, you let them steep for only five minutes, right? You don't suddenly do 25 minutes of steeping time, right? Time to cook is the same. Time to come to pressure is gonna take longer, okay? The second question um, I was gonna answer about, okay, you have a question? Yeah, Crispy Cantora is. Uh, she said she just bought an Ultra yeah. and it keeps saying it's burning. Yeah. I was making goulash. Are you supposed to stir everything or never let pasta touch the pan? Yeah, so I'll tell you something. If you just bought an Ultra, can I give you a piece of advice as your friendly neighborhood lady? Don't start with pasta. Uh, pasta is can be finicky. It's not that it's not possible to do. There are many, many recipes for making it possible. Um, but you, what you don't want is uh, you don't want tomato sauce at the bottom. You don't want a thick liquid at the bottom. So it's not so much about the pasta touching as much as it is about something that will scorch um, touching the bottom. So what I would suggest that you do is start with recipes that have no chance of burning. On my blog, twosleevers.com, I have, oh, 150 recipes that just require you to pour everything and close the lid. Once you get a feeling of confidence, you can start to mess around with pasta. I know everybody posts about pasta, yogurt, cheesecake, eggs. Uh, pasta is difficult. Eggs can be finicky. Cheesecake is a lot of fun. Uh, but pasta may not be the best place to start. By the way, I also have a video on YouTube about the six reasons why you get the burn error. So that might be of help for you. Um, so I would recommend that you check that out. Okay, many of you are wondering how I only did two tablespoons of water, which by the way is a perfect shot glass. If you would like to reward the cook, a shot of something you have at it, I won't tell anybody, this much water. Okay, why did I do that? I did that for several reasons. It is true that the pot needs a couple of cups of liquid, a cup and a half of liquid, depending on the size of the pot, a cup of liquid in order to come to pressure. But all of that water does not need to come from the tap. What did we put in here? We had onions that are going to release liquid. We had mushrooms that are gonna release liquid. Think about cooking it on a slow heat, right? Those things release liquid. The chicken releases liquid like you would not believe. Uh, and the spinach, of course, is gonna release a ton of liquid. So if you have liquid in the ingredients themselves, you don't necessarily need to add it on top. What you need to do is you need to be careful about how you layer it. So had I put um, something that doesn't release water that easily at the bottom uh, and then put my onions on top, uh, you know, I might have been in trouble. Putting the onions at the bottom, they release water really, really quick, and then you could put your other food on top. Uh, a comment, just yeah. got my, uh, Lisa Bell, just got my Instant Pot and did first cheesecake, it turned out okay, but my pot roast, not so much. What happened to your pot roast, Lisa? Leave a comment and tell me what happened. Because typically what happens is, um, if your pot roast didn't cook enough, if it was tough, it was probably because it didn't cook enough. And my recommendation to you would be, I know people advise that you cook like a three you know, pound um, hunk of meat. Um, I'll tell you, I find results to be a whole lot more reliable if you cut the, the thing up into chunks. Because then what happens is, the outsides and the insides are all equally exposed and they cook uh, at the same time. Pot roast sometimes can get tough if you don't cook it for long enough, and then what you find is the outside is dried out because it's cooked so long, and the inside That's isn't cooked it, enough. She said it dried up. Yeah, it dried up. So I don't know how long you cooked it, but typically what I do for, for a roast is I'll take like a two or three pound roast, and I'll cut it in three or four pieces, so they're about chunks about that size, and then I'll give it about, oh, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes, depending on the cut of meat, probably more. There are also some recipes that ask you to cook for 90 minutes. Um, meat gets tough at two times in its cook cycles. Initially when it's tough, it's because it's not cooked enough. It then goes through a tender cycle where it tenderizes, and then if you keep cooking, it gets tough. So when someone says my meat was tough, the first question I have to ask you is how big was the piece of meat and how long did you cook it? Because it was either overcooked or undercooked, right? So you just have to ask yourself kind of where you fall on that spectrum. Yeah, honey? Uh, actually, Lois 
Smith said that it also turns out tough if you don't use natural release. Okay, so I'll, let me talk about that a little bit. So there's a lot of um, a lot of people say this that you know if you don't use natural uh, pressure release, you got to let the meat rest. This is true, but not maybe for the reasons that you are sometimes told. So people say you have to use NPR because otherwise uh, you're not letting your meat rest. The reason that I use NPR and most well-written recipes use NPR is it because that's those 10 minutes or 20 minutes are actually cook time. So your food is cooking in three stages. One, when the pot comes to pressure, because the temperature in here is now 260 degrees, 250 degrees, obviously your food is cooking. Then it cooks while it's under pressure. And then when you turn it off and you let it natural pressure release, there's another 10, 15 minutes of cooking happening. So if you shortcut the last 15 minutes of cooking, I mean, keep in mind, pressure drops at about 212, which is still fairly hot, okay? So that, that NPR time is cook time. That's why sometimes um, if, you let it, if you take the pressure off early, your meat might turn out to be tough. It's not because the meat didn't rest or it didn't boil, it's because it didn't cook long enough, if that makes sense. Joe Terwilliger would like to know if my chicken is frozen, how long should I cook this? Yep, so again, it's gonna depend on the form of your chicken. If it's hunk old chicken, like you just dumped, you know, like six uh, chicken thighs into a baggie and shoved it in the freezer like I would do, and then you take it out and you put a whole hunk of meat in, uh, you do have to be a little bit uh, cautious because of what might happen is, let's say you had two layers of chicken thighs stuck on top of each other, um, you know, if it doesn't break apart, you might have a little bit raw on, on the inside and done on the outside. If you think you're going to be using your chicken in the instant pot, I would suggest that you freeze it flat uh, so that it's not on top of the other. Now, let's say you did that. Let's say you were a really good boy, you came back from the grocery store, you prepared your meat, you put it away properly. In that situation, you don't have to cook it for uh, any longer under pressure. Because you're putting in something that's really cold, the water needs to heat up around it. The ingredients around it need to heat up. That might take a little bit longer. So your time to pressure is going to be longer, but your time under pressure is going to be the same. Um, so while we were talking, this has already come to pressure is how fast this recipe is going to cook. Uh, I do have two finishing steps that I'm going to show you before we sign off. Uh, and I'll explain why I did not put cream and uh, lemon juice into this recipe when I started. Donna Colley Colbert would yep. like to know if using a recipe for a six quart, how much more liquid do you add for an eight quart plus time? Is right. There a rule of thumb? Yes. So the rule of thumb is actually quite simple, which is that for an eight quart, uh, if uh, sometimes you cannot double the recipe without adding a little bit of water. So technically, there's no additional time, but think, keep this in mind. So let's say that you're, I'm making this up, your six quart diameter is this much, and let's say your eight quart diameter is about that much, right? So now you have more surface area at the bottom that needs to be covered. If you don't have enough ingredients to cover the bottom of that, you have raw open spots where the heat is gonna be really, really high and you have, you're more likely to have burn. You're also more likely to have evaporation because in that larger pot, if you don't have as many ingredients, you're gonna get a little bit of um, you know, uh, open space and not as much content in a higher wattage, so you're gonna have a little bit extra. So here's what I would recommend. If you're not doubling the recipe and you're making it, it doesn't hurt to put in an extra one-fourth uh, to maybe two-thirds of a cup of water in there just to be on the safe side. As you get more and more experience with your Instant Pot, you'll know whether this is necessary or not. But if you put in a recipe and it barely covers the bottom, you know, that's a, that's a sign that you might have some issues. So in that case, either double the recipe and or put in a little bit of water. The recipe may be a little more liquid. You could saute it afterwards if you wanted to. Uh, Carmen Dizier Gore, and I apologize yes. if I butchered your name. Carmen is used to it, I'm sure. Which yeah. cookbook is this recipe in? Right, so this one, Carmen, thank you for asking. This one is an Instant Pot Fast and Easy. It's in uh, Costco, it's at Barnes & Noble, it's on Amazon, it's on Target. Actually, the Instant Pot uh, community moderators have very helpfully provided a link. Um, so you could just click on their link and go to Amazon and you can get this recipe. It has a hundred different recipes. And if, if I could, let me take a minute to talk about this. So here's the thing that an Instant Pot allows you to do, in my opinion. Not only does it allow you to make really good meals really fast, it exposes you to a very friendly community. And as part of that community, you start to learn how to make things from different countries and different cultures because recipes are so easily available. So I, as I mentioned earlier, I'm a foodie. I travel a lot for my real job. Blogging isn't my full-time job. Um, so, uh, you know, I've eaten in a variety of places. I enjoy food from different countries and I feel like food is a great entree into a different culture. So when I wrote this book, here are all the chicken ones, for example. Butter chicken with rice, like I said, some of you may know me as a butter chicken lady. Um, chicken shawarma, Afghani spiced chicken and rice, chicken adobo, which is Filipino, 
chicken with uh, cumin chili sauce, which is a Mexican recipe, creamy mushroom chicken, which we just made, Jamaican chicken curry, Japanese chicken curry, karhai chicken, which is Pakistani, poblano chicken soup, uh, which is Mexican, and an Ethiopian dorowat, a French garlic chicken, a lazy enchilada casserole, a sweet corn and chicken stew, and a Taiwanese version of three cup chicken. That's just the chicken section. We also have seafood, we have beef and pork and lamb, we have rice, lentils and beans, vegetables, desserts and drinks, and then I make my own sauces and spice mixes, um, so you'll have those. Uh, and there's a, there's a troubleshooting section in front that people just love. And here's the one thing that we try to do really differently with this recipe, is people don't tell you how long it takes for the pot to come to pressure. So here's a beef haleem recipe, it's a Pakistani recipe. Uh, 30 minutes of active time, natural quick release, you're going to use manual high pressure and the total time is going to be an hour and 25 minutes. So yeah, you might only have it under pressure for you know 25, 30 minutes, but it takes time for it to come to pressure. Then it has to stay on pressure. Then you have NPR. So we've tried to be really, really accurate so that you can estimate when dinner might be ready because hungry people and no dinner is a terrible combination for most of us. So this is this. And by the way, I also have a keto instant pot and an Indian instant pot that you might check out. Yeah, honey. Andrew Freeman would like to know, should you always sear your food first? Yes, so I never, never, never sear my food first. You really, if you're interested in the science behind it, um, go watch my video on the Maillard reaction, M-A-I-L-L-A-R-D, uh, on YouTube, and it will explain why I don't do that. Long story short, Maillard occurs under a variety of conditions. The pressure cooker creates one of those conditions very, very adequately. So typically we associate Maillard browning of a steak with dry heat. Uh, but Maillard is not an all or nothing proposition, it's a variable proposition. So at 230, 240 and above, Maillard starts to occur. And in long cook cycles, Maillard starts to occur. What happens when you sear the meat is you run the risk of a couple of things. One, you have taken out all of the flavorful juice on the broth from it and you replace it with plain water. The other thing that happens is you're more likely to have a fond at the bottom of your pot, which is a desirable thing when you're cooking in cast iron or on a stovetop. In a pressure cooker, in the instant pot, one of the safety features is if you have something burning at the bottom, it's going to give you an alert. So that's a problem. So I never sear my meat. Uh, I do have a ribs recipe that I will put in the oven afterwards. So reverse searing. If you're familiar with sous vide, you know how you reverse brown. I reverse sear. My God, I can talk forever. This thing is done while we were talking and I still have one stage to show you. Anna would like to know what is the best way to wash the lid? Oh, okay. Yeah. So um, best way to wash the lid is in the dishwasher. So what I do is um, I take the inside ring out. Um, I was interviewed actually for Food 52 of Bon Appetit and they were asking about how you clean the lid. So uh, I've heard weird solutions, but I've tried them and they actually work. So a lot of people have a savory and a sweet ring. I don't. I don't. It, it, the, the odors never seem to transfer for me. Um, you take the ring out, which is made out of silicone. You wash it. You put the lid into the dishwasher and wash it. Uh, and then if your ring still smells, take it outside and put it in the sunlight. I'm telling you that order will be gone. So now I'm going to open this. This is a mini. The same recipe was made in a mini, by the way, uh, and it fits. A mini will hold a pound of meat, four cups of beans. Um, you know, it'll hold, a mini holds a lot. I have a little graphic, an infographic that you can pick up on uh, twosleevers.com as to what it holds. Okay, now here's what's happened. Can you guys see? It looks a little messy. It doesn't look like much, but it's gonna be delicious. Now, one of the questions that I get asked with this recipe, I just pressed saute, by the way. One of the questions I get asked with this recipe is, why did you put the spinach in? Wouldn't it be okay to just put the spinach in afterwards? Yes, if you wanted the spinach whole, you would definitely put it in afterwards. What I wanted was spinach flavor. So I wanted all of the juicy broth and the good flavor from the spinach to infuse into it, uh, which is why I cooked it along with it. And some of us just like overcooked greens. I think I've lived in the South too long. I've lived in Texas for 32 years, 33 years. I've lived in Texas longer than I've lived anywhere else actually. Um, okay, so this chicken is beautifully done. There are mushrooms in here that are beautifully done. You have a couple of options. You could take the chicken out and you could use a blender and make a really, really smooth um, sauce out of it. You know, normally when I do my videos, I have an overhead camera, so I don't have to do the, these shenanigans that I'm afraid I'm gonna spill. There's a reason I have this on saute. So remember what I said, we were making a cream of mushroom uh, kind of a recipe in here. And many of the cream of mushrooms will require a can of mushroom soup. I don't eat that stuff. 
Uh, it also doesn't do very well in a pressure cooker. You need liquid that will bubble and steam, and that steam is what's gonna build pressure. If you have thick liquid like pasta sauce, cream of mushrooms, things like that, they don't work so well. Okay, so now here's what's happening. This is on saute. The liquid is boiling, the broth is boiling in here. I'm gonna pour in the most wondrous of all cooking ingredients, which is a, a half a cup of heavy whipping cream. Now, if you are dairy free, you can try some, uh, notice by the way, I'm pouring in little by little um, and I'm stirring because I don't want it to curl. If you are dairy free, uh, you can try coconut milk. Um, if you would like to reduce the calories, you can try um, half and half. I would not recommend that you do straight up milk unless you are also gonna put corn cornstarch. So what is gonna happen when this heats up is that there's gonna be a wonderful thickness to this thing. Let me scrape the last of the cream. We don't want to leave the cream. Um, so, you know, again, this is a very keto-friendly recipe, for sure. Now, why didn't I put this in early? Oh my God, I'm such a messy cook. There's like, there's food all over here. Let me just clean this up. I can't stand myself. Um, why did I not put the dairy in earlier? So dairy actually separates under pressure. Um, so if you put in anything with milk, um, or if you put in cheese, you know, I've seen recipes that ask you to do that. Don't do that. You're gonna open it up to a huge curdle mess. I do have an Indian rice kheer recipe where I asked you to do that. But I, I'm asking you to do that because in that case, I want you to separate the milk solids and use the solids uh, caramelized in the recipe itself, okay? So other than that, you don't wanna put dairy in ahead of time. Okay, so this is done. I'm gonna turn this off and then I'm gonna add in a little bit of lemon juice. Now, here's the thing about lemon juice. Anything acidic, um, whether it's apple cider vinegar, lemon juice, um, a straight up vinegar, uh, those are not heat resistant flavors. So sometimes I'll put some in because let's say I'm cooking beans. I want that uh, vinegar flavor or Tabasco sauce flavor to penetrate on the inside of the beans. Okay, I want the beans cooked with that flavor. However, what I need at the time of eating is I need a burst of acid on my tongue for it to taste good. If I heat it, you're not gonna get that acidic burst. Okay, so I'm gonna add this in and again, stir and do it very slowly because you don't want the milk to separate. Okay. Okay. Now, if you weren't watching, this is when I would taste it to see if I needed more, uh, more lemon juice or not. Guys, that was it. Okay, so I'm gonna put this on a plate for you and I'm gonna tilt the plate because me tilting a whole big um, container of hot liquid is a recipe for disaster. And then I'm gonna show you what we have here. Now, if you're keto, which uh, I often am, uh, you're gonna use cauliflower rice. This is the book. It's instant pot fast and easy. It's got a hundred different recipes, and if you have any questions, you can come into my Facebook group, Loop for the Two Sleevers groups, and we answer all questions in there. If not me, one of the other 30,000 very helpful, very nice people will answer a question for you. So again, I'm Urvashi, that's spelled U-R-V-A-S-H-I. Urvashi rhymes with Hershey. My blog is twosleevers.com, and I would love for you to check this out, Instant Pot, Fast and Easy. Thank you very much for watching, guys, and I will go around afterwards and answer any questions we may have omitted. Bye-bye.